Okay, Windows 8, there is so much that has been said about this, and uh, I have one, two here as well. I wanted to give you the developer point of view with Marco Kaiser, our CTO, Hi. and me uh, in, a, in an incredible show. <laughs> I'm just kidding. So what's cool about this, uh, Marco? Let, let, give us a developer point of view. Is it easy to cut apps for this? I mean, the, the big thing here, and this is not tablet specific, but Windows 8 is kind of the uh, new runtime you get, the new environment for developing at Metro style apps, which are these full screen apps uh, with a new interface um, inspired by this Metro design language that Microsoft has. Um, it's all built on top of a new Windows runtime framework. It's called Windows RT or WinRT. And, and the biggest improvement here, or like the biggest step ahead, is the um, full choice of languages you get to code apps, actually. So you have the choice between C++, you have the choice between C Sharp, Visual Basic, or even, and that's, that's the really new thing here, is uh, you can code applications completely in HTML, JavaScript, CSS. Uh, so technologies which, usually are tied to the web. Which, is, which was my question is that, so you know this debate between HTML5 and native, right? Yes. So here you were showing me an app, I don't know what app. Yes, it was. so it's, it's actually the demo um, app. The, one of the demo apps that was pre-installed on the on these devices that were handed out at Microsoft Build Conference. Oh, so that's just a conference. The, which is the conference app, so it's the yeah. kind of the guide to the conference. Yeah. And all this 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 application is done in HTML JavaScript. The code is actually available to developers, so they published that, so you can look at it, and it's. It doesn't feel like it looks like a website. It does well. It looks like it looks like Metro, but it, it doesn't like it's it's not a website. It's a local installed application with full access to the device. So uh, tell me what you can do, for example, like uh, access to camera. Yeah, everything you could do from other languages like C plus plus or C sharp. You can also do from Windows, from JavaScript. Store on the tablet Store as well. Store on the tablet. Um, uh, you can roam data. I mean, offline with, mode. Offline, like yes. Walk it, offline. It's, yes, it doesn't need to be online. Again, the app is not downloaded from the internet. It's installed on the device. So that's something. That's something that, like iOS and Android, don't do, right? You don't. You can't have access to a camera. They don't. Well, they not if you are a website. I mean, um, there are there are like similar applications or like frameworks on top of iOS that you can also use to, to kind of like create HTML applications, but it's not supported natively by the platform. I see. Okay, so that was the HTML5 versus native thing. So here it doesn't really make sense. So why would I use uh, C Sharp or C++ or whatever other language instead of just doing everything in HTML and JavaScript? Um, well, I mean... Well, that's I think my view on the side by way of working on our iPad app. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think the, the biggest advantage is not so much of like when would you use one or the other. Obviously, C++ is probably compiled down to native code, so it runs faster. So if you have like um, number crunching things to do, it's probably better to do in that language. But I think the, the biggest advantage is you get the full choice. So it opens up the, the platform to more developers than just like C++ oh, or C Sharp developers. Okay. So, so even if you are a web developer, you can now leverage your skills that you have in HTML, JavaScript, and CSS. Oh, and build an to app build, simply. Like, so native applications that run on, on a Windows 8 device. Very simple and very fast. Very simple. And, and fast. so you think this has a chance uh, you know, against the iPad and, and Android? Well, that's, that's more a question of like, okay, can Microsoft bring this like, to tablets, to real tablets? Because the device that was handed out at Build is obviously more like a full PC. Um, this has an Intel i5 processor, four gigabits of RAM. So this is more like <laughs> and a, a very nice fan. Yeah, it has a very nice fan. And only gets, two hours gets, battery. It gets pretty hot down here. Um, and then two hours battery. It's a little better than that, but still, it's 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 more like a competitor to like a to like a small um, laptop computer, notebook computer. Yeah, and you're using it like this. You have a keyboard. I have a keyboard have here. So it, it came actually with a with a. a Bluetooth keyboard. You connected a, the mouse, right? It has well, a USB port right. here. It has an HDMI out. It has like uh, a lot of connectivity yeah. uh, in this dock. So actually, yes, you can use it as a. If you set it up like this, you can you can use it as a as a full computer. And it, again, it's like um, as powerful as the no notebook that is kind of standing next to it here on my right, desk, which uh, is a which MacBook is Air. A MacBook Air, but still. Yeah. Um, so this has a p more powerful computer uh, processor. So yes. Um, this doesn't have a chance as a tablet in this this way against like iPad, but if Microsoft, as they promised, bring this to the ARM architecture, so the the processor is used today in tablets from Android or iPad, um, I think so. I mean the 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 whole Metro UI, the UI inter interface is is like very very interesting, very nice. People love it. Um, so from that point of view, and it's different. That's I think the biggest biggest 
advantage it has. It's really different from what iPhone or or uh, iOS and Android did so far. So yeah. And so so yeah, because there are a lot of developers, and yeah, because Microsoft will probably sell a lot of those. Again, that's that's definitely cheap, something cheap hardware. Yeah, I mean, they, they definitely need to find a price point that is competitive to, to the uh, to iOS or even cheaper, so mm. they convince people to switch. Um, I think I mean the, the the big thing is this is not a tablet OS. This is Windows OS, so it runs on PCs as well as on on uh, tablets in the same way with the same user interface. Um, right, but don't we don't want that, right? I mean, like I, as a user, can you go back to? So let's see if I can pull this. Just start. Yeah, start. And then if you hit here, you yes. go straight to the desktop, right? I go straight that's, to the desktop. That's Windows 7, basically. That is Windows 7. So I have my, my standard Explorer here. And you are coding on this earlier. I'm coding on this, yeah. yes. I can, I can, so if I, I can bring up like a full um, desktop environment. So if, if you're a Windows developer, you know Visual Studio. And it, well, it runs Windows Visual Studio. Yeah. Um, I don't expect this to happen basically on a, on a real ARM tablet yeah. that is like, like an iPad. But again, if, if this is an operating system that runs on netbooks, notebooks, PCs, um, obviously, yes, you can still run legacy apps. And um, Legacy apps. <laughs> legacy meaning not created for Windows but 8 do Metro. Do you think a Visual Studio will go Metro, for example, like complex apps like that? I don't know. Maybe maybe not in the next next release, yeah. because the, the Metro experience is definitely built around touch. Touch first. I mean, that was Microsoft's message, mm. touch first. Um, I don't think creating applications with a tool like Windows, uh, like, like Visual Studio, is necessarily like a yeah. touch experience. Um, at least yeah, like, like working on Excel or on accounting the apps. Same, the same probably goes exactly for like spreadsheets or even like Photoshop work. Um, it's probably something where you need more finer control than, than you get from and, and, like, touching a screen. And the fact that it's going to be released in 12 months? Well, that's obviously like a... Because like all the naysayers of Microsoft yes, say, yeah, there's, that there's sucks. A of, like, that, that's a long runway for Microsoft, yeah. obviously, to get to that point. Um, but they did it with the Xbox, right? They did it with the Xbox. They did it with Windows 7. So it's, it's the typical Microsoft cycle of like, okay, one year before, we'll have a developer re preview, uh, and that's what it is. So it's not as stable as it kind of like will be. I'm sure there will be still um, things that will change along the way from user feedback. Um, next step will be beta. Um, Can you show that stylus with uh, sure. a note app? I, I, I like that actually. So, well, yes, it also comes with a stylus. Um, <laughs> which looks a little... Which looks weird. Uh, yeah. So and if I can find the, the application right now. So obviously it, it has some... Yeah, and you can't like, you can't write like this, yeah, that thin on an iPad, right? You can't write like that. So I can, I can try, well, actually this doesn't work with a, with a finger, but yeah. usually you can't like write that or, or scribble like Because I, I, I use an, an app for not on a notes on, on my iPad and it doesn't, it's not as precise. Yeah. And it actually, it even comes with, let's see if it works, it comes with like character recognition. So yeah, I saw that. Actually, yeah. if you take notes and you can, you can actually recognize it. And, and well, it didn't, didn't recognize well. that, but hello, hello it, it found the hello. Hello, okay. I guess it's a simple um, one. It's yeah. a simple one, but it even works like fairly well. Maybe it needs some training, but it, it really works well. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's a this this is really multi-purpose device. Like this tablet, as they handed it out at the conference. Um, again, it has the touch experience. It has all the sensors like GPS and gyros and, and accelerometers. Um, but it also brings the full desktop experience if you need it with a keyboard and with a mouse, obviously. Um, the real question is, do we need that? Well, you can have only one computer, that's what we're saying. Exactly. So that, that's, I, I totally see, like, like obviously this, again, as I said, this is not an iPad competitor in this form factor. And this. Like, yeah. No, but the next effects. one, the ARM one. But well, the ARM one it, won't have it, access to it. So, I mean, Microsoft hasn't been clear about that, but yeah. my hunch would be that the ARM re devices that they'll bring out won't have the classical desktop, the Windows 7 basically desktop, and won't run old applications that were not built specifically for Metro. Um, is there a place for devices like that? I think so. It could be. I mean, um, it's again. If I put it like this, it's like a like a small laptop. Um, yeah. And I can totally see people who are like traveling, who are on the road, like throughout the day, just use the tablet version and use Metro style apps, but still need to do some like more number work on spreadsheets in the evening, and just then using it with a dock and a, and a keyboard. And so, as a developer, developer, of a, like you're excited. I am excited about the possibilities of this platform, like again, like the HTML, JavaScript richness, but also it brings a lot of like new things um, that are known from, from other platforms, um, like iOS or like Android, like push notifications, but now to the desktop. Mm -hmm. So Metro has like push notifications, so you can actually like push notifications to every computer in the world. 
the uh, system. Uh, um, and you get like roaming profiles. So best yeah, Oh, there is push notifications push okay, notifications. on any computer, okay. Yes, and, and there's roaming profiles. So if I, if I run like one application on multiple computers that run Windows 8, and I'm signed in with the same cloud account, which is a live, Windows Live account, um, the data automatically synchronizes between the different computers. That's cool. So that's infrastructure provided. So yes. Hmm. So there are a lot of. I think there are a lot of opportunities for developers to make use of these these new features. I mean, again, th there's one 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 thing that is also nice is the integration between different applications running on the same computer. They have diff they have like the sharing, for example. So any application can share share something with another application. Hmm. Um, so that's but a. Nice one thing. of the big challenges, voice that get. So if you're so, so you're a big partner at Seismic, and you know, yeah, that's that. Don't get me wrong on this, but if you created uh, Marco Kaiser Inc. Yes. And and you you had to choose a platform for a very cool app you're creating. Yes. Y you don't go for that yet, right? Because no, there's yeah. no distribution. That's my point. Is you you have zero users on that yet? Yeah. I mean, again, obviously, if if this will happen sometimes, hopefully in 2012, that this becomes like general availability. Uh, so that's that's a long time, and more likely, like looking at previous release cycles from Microsoft, more of that towards the end of next year. Yeah. Um, so obviously, if I if I have a cool app that takes me two months to develop or whatever, and that I want to publish in two months, yeah, yeah no, you I won't, won't go get for Windows 8. Because <laughs> nobody has Windows 8 by yeah. then. Um, is it if you are traditionally already a Windows developer, and if you have Windows clients, or if you want to like tap into as many like uh, mobile markets as well, looking at the tablet strategy here. Um, I definitely would keep an eye on Windows 8 and see if, if this is a platform that, that kind of like is worth investing in in the future. And again, my, Windows has a huge installation base uh, on, on devices uh, across the globe. So um, I think it would be, would be wrong to deny the, the, the possibilities here. And, and is so it a guarantee for success? I don't know. And so the, like the question like we have as a developer, we built a Silverlight app, mm -hmm. we built a Windows Phone 7 app, mm -hmm. and for this we have to start all over again, right? We can't use, can we use the code? Well, I mean, again, see, Silverlight is based on C Sharp, our code is based on C Sharp, this can, do, can be done in C Sharp, so there could be code reuse for some things. The, the application model behind Metro apps is radically different from classical applications because they they are much more looking at the model that is used already in other mobile platforms. So applications are only running in the foreground, and if you are not don't run them in the foreground, they are kind of suspended. Um, so things we did before, like background refreshes of like data, pulling your Twitter timelines or whatever, it's just not going to be possible anymore as a metro application mm -hmm. uh, because the model is so different. Um, so you have to rethink a lot of things if you if you build applications here. Um, there's no for 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 an application like ours, like Seismic Desktop. Uh, built on Silverlight, obviously there's probably no easy transition from the current yeah. model to the new Metro style. Cool. Marco Kaiser, thank you very much. He's excited with Windows 8, but uh, not before next year for now. Thanks, Zoic. <laughs> Maybe earlier, we'll see. <laughs>